Hello everyone and welcome to the podcast once again. Just a reminder, listener discretion is advised and any tips or information you use here is done so at your own risk. Okay, with that being said, let's dive into today's topic. So, I wanted to talk today about anxiety, but there's another matter that I thought is more pressing for me to talk about before we touch on anxiety um, just as one single topic. I want to talk today about the emotions and all the feelings and the absolute overwhelming state that our minds are in during this lockdown and during this pandemic. This is, I don't think people realize that this is the biggest thing to hit us as human beings, as a nation, as an international community since probably the Second World War. Let that sink in. It is huge. Everywhere it seems that people are at war with each other in the sense that it's a fight against this virus but it becomes a fight against other people in the sense that some people do not take the lockdown or the procedures that are in place seriously and hence conflict arises and governments have to deploy their own military to keep their citizens in check and use force in some cases if they deem it necessary which creates a very negative and hostile environment especially to to vulnerable people who who do not really have a good relationship with law enforcement or the police because in the past um I know of people who have been through trauma and crime and when they go to the police to report that they don't get support there. They sometimes get secondary trauma by going through that process. And I've heard positive stories of police going out of their way helping people. So I really don't want people to think I'm putting the police in a bad light not at all I think just like everybody else or any other system it has its positives and it has its flaws so it's just that the fact that people are losing their rights of movement or they they, you know the right to to freedom of movement the right to have their businesses open the right to interact with people in their community, the freedom to to be. And I mean that's been taken away and it seems like some it seems like not such a big price to pay if you if you have to choose that or dying or contracting this disease and infecting other people and killing them. I mean if you if you put the two together I think it it's it's still a better choice to give up that freedom of movement in exchange of being safe it is definitely not a big price to pay i think we can be at peace with that decision that it is the correct decision it is not a bad decision it is not you know you're not just giving it up because you are being wronged I think as you may feel wrong though, I think we all feel we did nothing wrong, we didn't do anything to deserve this but we are now stuck and a lot of things are happening to us. People are without their jobs, they're being retrenched, entrepreneurs are suffering, they cannot keep their business going because if they're not actively involved in their business, no money is coming in. So they literally sit and they are facing poverty, they are facing 
not just everything that goes along with basically being jobless. And that's scary. That's horrible. That's absolutely scary. And it's, uh, it's devastating on the emotions because it, it affects everything about your life. It affects your family life. It affects you as a person, as an individual. And it affects how you see the world and deal with people. And it can make you angry because you feel you don't, you don't deserve this. You, you really, none of us deserve this. None of us deserve to feel caged like an animal. Even though, like I said before, this is a positive decision and it is, you know, it is the right thing to do. It is for our benefit. It is for our, for our own good. That doesn't change the if devastating effect that it is having on us and on our families. It doesn't change the, the effect and the, the worry that people have, especially people that have kids, children that depend on them. And also with kids, children are probably going to miss their whole school year. They are not going to be able to complete the year educationally. They're going to be a year behind. And that is insane to repeat a year for no reason other than there's a pandemic you can't help it and nobody's going to blame you but it's still those children have to sacrifice basically a year of the education hopefully it won't get to that i really hope that we can continue but if it's necessary the lockdown must continue we can't i don't want to see people around me die that i care about and also i don't even people i don't care about or not care about but don't know even strangers I don't want to infect people I don't want to see anybody suffer longer than they should so if it's necessary yes unfortunately you will have to um, sit a year out or have to uh, basically do a do your, your grade over that's still a devastating effect that it's having on children and why I'm mentioning this and I don't want people to get the wrong idea of why I'm talking about this. It is important to acknowledge how you feel. It is important to be vocal about the effect that this pandemic, this lockdown, this disease is having on you and on people you care about even though we're practicing social distancing and i think so the word social distancing in and of itself is it's a good thing the actual act of practicing it but the the terminology is completely wrong it should be physical distancing not social distancing because people think social distancing means that you you must Yes, you must be apart from people, we all know that, but that's all physical situations. It is not social. We must still reach out to other people in safe ways, by means of technology. If you go to the grocery store, even if you are in a safe distance and you have a mask on or you don't have a mask on, it doesn't matter, but you can still be friendly, you can still just be positive especially to the people that are working there, the, the cashiers that, have, that are working to open a shop for us so that we can get necessities like food. If they have to see that negativity every day, it's going to negatively affect them. It's going to, then if you are down, if your system is down emotionally, it will affect your immune system and will make them even more vulnerable. So just being positive, even if you don't feel positive, it's a situation of, unfortunately, you fake it till you make it. You just, I'm not saying be Mr. or Mrs. Sunshine the whole time, but just smiling, being friendly, greeting people, being civil, not just treating other people like, oh, you might have the disease, I must stay so far away from you, I mustn't even acknowledge your existence. How do, do you think it makes those people feel? How does it make you feel when people treat you like that? 
So yes, we have to protect ourselves and do the necessary precautions. But we can do that while at the same time still shining a light towards other people. We don't have to dim our light or hide who we are as humans. We can still just try and reach out to people and be positive and be and just bring a little bit of some sense of fresh air and sunlight to them in their life in a social way and thank the people for their service thank them for being open and helping us the same with the police and the military and the health workers they're risking themselves and what about their families that are exposed to this virus through them working to keep humanity safe their family is at risk they can possibly infect their families so there's a constant stress on these people they are worried they are scared for their family but they're also scared of the people that they're helping because they have a calling they're trying to help civilization and community they've got a higher duty a higher calling and so i think we all have that higher calling upon us to adhere to what was said and also not just to adhere to what we should adhere to but to be a beacon of hope to other people this will not be the end of us this is not the end of the story this is not the final chapter of this of this year of this book of your life this is really not the end so i need you to not focus on what could possibly happen that is to come back to anxiety people who have anxiety will understand what i'm talking about even before this pandemic if you suffer from anxiety that is where your brain goes to automatically you think of the possibilities that could happen and your People that suffer from depression and anxiety are sometimes your most logical people that you can find because they see situations the way it can logically play out. They're not necessarily, um, what is the expression in English? I'm going to say it in Afrikaans. Hulle maak a berg van a moorswip. They are inflating. They are not um saying the stuff as it really is they 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 inflating and making it sound bigger or more serious than it is but that's not necessarily the case sometimes that those fears are legit sometimes if you if you fear if you fear for example if you have anxiety and let's say for example you have your own business and there's no pandemic now your business is functioning but you don't have enough clients now you're scared of your income and you're scared it's going to be exactly like that you're never going to get more clients and you're scared of the of the implications it will have in your business and you're not getting enough money in and the actual service that you're offering you feel you want to focus on that but that whole thing is playing in your head and it's making you more and more negative and is now affecting other areas in your work and it has a ripple effect now that doesn't mean that those feelings are invalid yes there is a possibility your business will not be as successful but what can you do to improve that what can we do to remedy that situation because you can it is not set in stone that that would be the outcome now it's the same for this pandemic yes we have the facts we have the cards the cards are on the table but what do we do with those cards how do we play them what in your situation and we all have to do some introspection otherwise we're going to absolutely go nuts because we won't be able to cope we have to absolutely do introspection this is the time to ask yourself what can i do in my situation what is the best decisions i can make for myself and my family with the cards i've been dealt 
how can we work together because together is how we will get through this we're not going to get through this by trying to beat this on our own whether you have money or not the economy is collapsing so money is really not yes it is you need money to survive but even those people that think they have money and they're living in their mansions it for them it's the same story everyone has to work together everyone has to hold hands in a let's say in a figurative way right we all have to take hands in a figurative way and come together even within physical distance and put our brains together and work together and help each other so if you need help if you don't have enough money for food ask someone to help you reach out to your family the thing is I usually give homework at the end of the of the episode so I think this homework would be your most important homework assignment if you don't do anything that I put on this channel that's 100% fine but this is something I think is essential that everybody has to have and that's a support system organize a support system for yourself and your family get your support system in place reach out to people you cannot go through this alone and if things feel absolutely impossible find someone to talk to vent cry scream whatever you need to do to get it out you need to release those feelings you need to be vocal about them like i said i'm not going to pussyfoot around issues i'm not going to tiptoe around things you cannot tiptoe around how you feel you cannot keep inside your feelings of vulnerability and how you feel scared you don't have to broadcast that to the whole world but get it out okay try and talk to somebody if you don't have somebody to talk to grab a pen and a paper and write it down or say it even out loud it doesn't matter just get it out of your system and then the moment you can get your emotions out of the way you can start to think clearer and come up with a plan come up with your own emergency plan or your own plan of dealing with whatever you are going through and what your family is going through this is something that's affecting every single human being on the planet not just in South Africa not just in Africa or on the continent it's the whole world is suffering so we cannot afford to think we are special in our suffering suffering tends to unite people through a mutual understanding you can even see it in the way that most people are setting aside their political differences or their, their differences of belief, their differences of uh, opinion, of culture. Everybody's putting all that stuff aside and just trying to survive, trying to come together. And that is the most important thing that we must do to beat this, to overcome this, and to get out on the other side with the ones we love. That is all we can do during this time. And reach out to other people. Give other people what you don't have. If you feel lonely, reach out to somebody. Reach out to somebody as if somebody would have reached out to you while you were lonely. If you feel the need to talk to somebody, tell someone else. I'm here for you. Let's have a conversation. And then the moment they start talking to you, you talk to them. Don't be passive in your, in your fears and your anxieties and your anger. Don't be passive in it. Put it to use. Get it out there. So please, get your support system going. Voice how you feel. Don't bottle up how you feel. This is not the time. And everyone's story is unique. But in our suffering and in this whole situation 
we are the same and we are all experiencing a similar situation so please i really need to stress this upon you don't isolate yourself socially in the sense that you don't reach out to people i know they call it social isolation but the terminology is it isn't to me correct it's physical distancing and physical isolation socially use your technology use the means that you can you know in any way you can that's safe to reach out to other people because i think this is the time that we cannot be socially isolated physically yes socially not all right i know this was a bit of an intense um episode today and we're in this together if you need to to talk to somebody and you have no one to talk to please leave a comment uh, i'm putting this up on youtube now as well so you can leave a comment there if you need a way to reach out to me i will read it and i will answer your questions so there is a platform for you to communicate with me and i'll try and and do what i can to help you from a distance so be safe and be mindful and whenever you need to go back to those coping exercises use them and we will talk again in the next episode stay safe bye